Hey everyone, my name is Al, and thank you for tuning in to this video segment of continual spiritual growth, understanding ourselves, our environment, and walking in our own power. Today, I want to talk about something that is a little different. You know, it's, as you probably read from the title, it's something that I feel may be quite out there, but I think it's good to talk about because it will likely be relevant to someone else's experience and their life. I know it's relevant to my life and it's a true story. But before I get into that story, I just want to take a moment and say that I hope your new year has been great so far. We are coming to an end to the first week of 2020 and I hope that you have been making 2020 your year so far. It is the year of the master builder after all. And with that being said, let's get right into the good stuff. This story is the first time that something like this has ever happened to me. And again, as I said, it's a true story. And while it may have been alarming during this time, I'm glad that I had the experience because as a wise person once told me, experience is not only the best teacher, but it is the only teacher. So with that in mind, last year, 2019, I was attending a gathering and in this gathering, there were you know, food, games, laughter, and of course, drinking. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I am not the type of person to go out and have drinks. You know, I just don't go out of my way for it. If you ask people who know me in person, they'll tell you straight away that I almost never drink. <laughs> I don't, you know, for me, it's something that I personally do not find enjoyment in. It's something that kind of just takes me out of the present moment. And it kind of makes me feel like I'm a handicapped version of myself. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. And, you know, I operate at a lower frequency and a lower cognitive ability because of it. And I just don't like that, but that's my relationship with it. But this time around at this gathering, because I drink seldomly, I figured maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to have just a little, you know, just a little, just a glass. <laughs> well, after we get around to playing some card games and you get into it, you can imagine because, you know, things, how things progress naturally, it was more than that glass, <laughs> you know, but I was enjoying myself even though I was in a not so desired state because of who I was surrounded by. I was having fun, laughing, and just enjoying the company around me. And after all was said and done, when I went to sleep, this is where things get a little interesting, right? This is the good stuff. So in a dream, I was in my own apartment and it was nighttime. The moon was casting its bright moonlight through the windows and it's lighting up the entire place as if it was like a really bright full moon. And the furniture in my apartment was different. You know, the size of the rooms were different as well. They were much larger, probably about twice the size. And in one room, there were two people. Uh, there was with this gentleman whom I didn't know and myself, just me and this other person. And I think one of us was teaching the other something or sharing some sort of special knowledge. I don't really know, but we were interrupted. So the gentleman who I was talking to started to look behind me and his eyes opened wide and he was what he, he was looking at something behind me as if something was there you know and when I saw his face you know I'm wondering what's going on and I feel guarded and naturally I turned around to see who or what he was looking at but as I was turning around before I could get a good look I became paralyzed I fell down on my back and I watched this transparent shadow float past me and towards my guest. And this happened so fast, I didn't even know what happened until I was laying there. You know, it was just like, boom! <laughs> and I couldn't move. You know, just like how you probably experienced sleep paralysis at some point, I was experiencing paralysis in that moment. It's the exact same experience. Not being able to move, not being able to move your head or open your mouth and yell or talk. You know, the exact same feeling and experience of being trapped in your own body. That's how I was feeling. But except this time, someone inflicted 
this body paralysis on me and they had shady intentions <laughs> see what i did there <laughs> oh i realized something interesting i realized that i was not the target but my guest was the target and they paralyzed me to get to the person who i was talking to and at that point you could imagine that i felt scared that i was terrified that this was happening you know and that couldn't be further from the truth i wasn't scared you know at first i was confused as to you know what happened and then i realized what happened and i got confused i was like how could this have happened in my own house you know second i became angry <laughs> yeah i wasn't afraid i was angry because i thought to myself did this just happen did this really just happen in my own house with a guest no no not like this this is bs i'm not gonna tolerate this you know not in my house and the third thing that I was feeling was this thing was moving towards my guest in my apartment. I felt this sense of duty and responsibility to protect someone that was in my space. You know, like hospitality 101. It, it's just the right thing to do. And even though I've never been in this situation before, intuitively, I knew exactly what to do. So as I laid there like a brick, <laughs> I focused on one of my most powerful mantras that personally worked for me. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I should share what that mantra is because it's like my most powerful weapon. You know, it's a weapon and a shield that I have at the moment. But anyways, I say this mantra to myself with the certainty that I'm going to gain control of my body. And that's exactly what happened. I just knew that it was going to happen and it happened as expected. And on top of that, I envisioned myself blasting and radi radiating light out of my body. And that's really important. We should talk about that in future videos. And after I regained control, I stood up and looked at this transparent shadow. And I thought to myself, I can't believe that you tried to do this in my house, dude. You know, it's like, <laughs> like, what's up? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and intuitively, just like I knew how I could regain control of my body, I knew this being did not expect me to successfully fight its power and get back on my feet. You know, the way that it felt towards me was like catching a thief red-handed. You know, they have that moment of fear where they're, you know, they're just frozen for a split second like a deer in headlights before they run off. And I felt that this entity realized that they weren't going to get away with whatever it is that they were trying to do. And, you know, as I felt that, you know, full steam ahead, like a train, dude, I ran towards this thing, dude. I, I sprinted towards it, you know, just all the way across the room, you know, trying to scare this thing off. And I would have put my hands around it if I had the opportunity, but it escaped through one of my windows into the night where I couldn't see it anymore. You know, there's a couple woods where I am and it just, it was just gone. And after that, I felt like I demonstrated to myself that I'm starting to walk in my own power. And I know that I can handle certain situations as long as I know and remember that I can handle them. That's how I felt. And that's when I woke up. And it was in the middle of the night, by the way, like 4 a.m., yeah, 4 a.m. in the morning. And I reflected on this encounter for days after that, you know, just really thinking about it because this was the first and only time that I've ever had an entity or something like that intrude my space like that you know and i asked myself why did that happen and to be honest i think it's fair to say without a doubt that it was linked to the drinking that i was doing that night drinking not only dumbs you down for a while but it lowers your vibration and i feel like my so-called vibration was lowered just enough for something like that to tap into my space which <laughs> that's not good you know and I'm not going to get into the other specific details on why I feel that alcohol caused this. You know, maybe I'll get into that later on. Let's just say that they call it spirits for a reason. You know, I think I'm, I think I'll actually will do a video on that in the future and I'll link it here when it's made. And I, I'll just leave it at that for now. And before I get off, I also want to mention that the reason why I was able to defend myself was because I've, I feel like I put in the practice 
of defending myself as well as being certain that I could defend myself. And well, you're probably wondering, how did I practice self-defense you know, in this way, in a dream state? And how was I sure that I would overcome? And I feel like it's, I think it's a simple thing really. And, you know, keep, do keep in mind, this is my experience. You know, this is what has worked for me and I can't say it will universally work for everybody. So just keep that in mind, you know, kind of like how one person could have a diet and have a lean body and someone else could try to do, have to do the uh, same diet, but they get different results, you know? things will vary. I just want to put that out there. So what I do is one of the things I do is I practice gratitude and I also monitor my thoughts. So if something spikes fear or insecurity or something that makes me feel down, I exercise my powerful mantra to be present in the moment and confident in myself. And that, you know, basically I'm not just here with my, with the shell and my default consciousness, but all of me is here and that might sound odd to some of you and that's just the exercise part maybe we'll talk about that in the future as well i don't want to get too much into that but basically like i'm just confident and nothing can stop me and the second part of this is that you know the whole confidence aspect takes time because as you grow spiritually you start to recognize the synchronicities in your life you will naturally feel more certain in yourself and you can tap into the certainty and use it as a powerful source to get things done. Let's see, think of it this way. If you don't believe that you can do something, are you going to do it? Hell no, <laughs> right? If you believe that you can't do something, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you do have the confidence that you can do something and you truly believe yourself, you know, at the utmost highest levels, you're gonna do it, no questions asked. So practice high positive thinking, practice making yourself feel confident in yourself with your thoughts and your heart and with gratitude. And that will be a great step in the right direction. Also practice visualizing light being around you as well as being within you. Practice light visualizations, that helps a lot as well. And that's all I have to say for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that story. If you like this video, I would like to kindly ask that you please click that like button. And if you haven't already, be sure to join me on my journey and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon as well so that you are notified when I put out a new video, which is now two times a week, one on Wednesdays and the other on Sundays. Thank you very much for watching. And in my native tongue, I say, ha home.